Oh, as Gabe got himself into. Is this your boat? Yeah. Who bought it? Me. Is your money? Yeah. What'd you pay for it? Six. Five fifty? Yeah, right. Five fifty. Trailer needs a bit of work, but she tows when we got it an engine. There we gotta fix up. We got another one matching from another boat. So we'll make the best out of two. And what you up to now? I need to grind the whole inside. Do you think the front's good, Dad? Yeah, I think that's good. Nice job. It's really hard because your foot. In here, in here is difficult, right? Yeah, it's really difficult right there and like right here, Dad. Yeah, we can get that with a drill. Yeah. Nice. Do you need a kneel pad? Nah, I'm good. Don't hurt your knees. No, I don't. <laughs> All right. I took out the big wasp nest down there. You can there. probably you can probably do this too with paint. Yeah, I was thinking. Okay, just a little over here. You reckon this is seaworthy? River worthy boat. I think it's lake, seaworthy. Lake worthy? Seaworthy on a good calm day. Seaworthy on like a it could probably be a bit choppy. Mm. But like you're not going that fast anyway. Right. It's pretty sturdy. Keep on keeping on. Mm-hmm. Nice job, bud. Yeah, what's the next step after this, you think? Like painting it? Oh, bracing it up, making sure that it needs... Bracing up, and then painting, and then furnishing it out. And then what? And then furnishing it out. Furnishing it? What, are you going to put an armchair in there? No. Like, put, like, seats. You have to get seats. I was seat... thinking, Dad, look. Seats are in Vancouver. Dad, come over here. I was thinking I could... This little hot. We'll fix it up. But I was thinking I could make maybe a little aluminum little box. Or, like, almost like a little... Yeah, something that goes in there that I can take out, so I can just put the fish in there. Probably easy to put a cooler in here. Mm, so then it you can put supplies in there. Nah, so it doesn't. I, actually, you could probably put gun. life jackets in there. Yeah, life jackets, stuff like that. Uh, fishing tackle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That the front is probably the hardest one. It's yep. So hard to get to all the little little bits. This is just more. Then you should shine this up all nice and silver. <laughs> Beauty. Yeah. Okay, so back into the ugly house. It's hot still. I am gonna be, well, I'm sheathing the floor. I'm almost done. I got about a quarter of the way to go, probably. I don't know if I've got enough sheets, but um, I'm starting to think. Industrial look, plywood floor might look pretty cool. I don't know. It looks much better than the old floor, just having a consistent, nice, light floor. Um, I plywooded the back wall there because I want to do a feature wall and it want, and then half inch plywood allows me to kind of nail whatever I want to that back wall. So yeah, I'm gonna get at it and try and finish this today. Good day's work done, and these are my scraps. That is pretty good. Pretty good. I stretched it right out. I would have preferred to use a full sheet at the end. It's never nice having a little patchwork like what you have here, but um, you know, didn't want to go to the lumber yard. It's crazy, you know, you pay so much for lumber these days, and it's still not good quality. Like this is three eighths, and at the end here, it's like quarter inch thick. It's like one of the plies got removed. 
Anyway, this feels pretty good and I'm actually considering, because this kind of has a loft vibe to it even though it's on the ground. Um, it's not high ceiling, but it's kind of open um, bachelor suite loft thing. So I'm thinking potentially about running plywood as the finished product and then just clear coating it. Probably definitely cheaper than flooring and um, it'll kind of have a, I think it'll make it feel more spacious because whenever you add lines, the more lines you add, the, 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 the smaller a space feels. So yeah, I'll muse on that for a bit. Here, I'm gonna, just gonna put that in the rod holder and I'm gonna bring it over here. So don't worry about where that rod is. And remember what I said, you wanna hold, don't put the net in the water until you're ready to uh, net it. Okay. I don't want to lose, lose, lose it. You want your dad to do it? Well, why don't you give Gabe the rod at the... I, I might be or Gabe, you want to steer the boat? Okay, it's going to gonna come over here, okay? Just no, 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 over to the side. And and, and don't go until I tell you, Dave. Over here. Over here. Okay, go. You got him. Good job, bud. Wait, I got it. I got it. Don't take that. Nice one. One day's catch. One of those salmon was worth how much? One hundred and thirty bucks. And we go. How many? Three. Three. So that's three it was about four. 70, 75 centimeters. So we got three hundred and almost four hundred dollars worth of fish. Plus cod, more like five hundred. How's the project going? You got caught? Squeeze my finger in the crack. You need gloves. <laughs> Boat's looking good though. Put a coat of paint on it. Nice. This part's not so fun, is it? No. No, pretty rusty. Well, it's, uh, it feels like summer's wrap up is on the horizon. I mean, we've still got a ways to go, but man, has it ever been an incredible summer. The heat has been intense. The rain has been virtually non-existent and that's brought its fresh um, challenges for sure. Uh, it, you know, it's its fair share of challenges, I should say. Um, you know, dealing with irrigation, you know, booking a well, having to refill our shallow well over and over and over, which has cost us probably close to $1,000 at this point. But you kind of get in the groove. You kind of figure it out. Like when it first starts, you're like, oh my God, and panic. And then you just kind of get in the rhythm. The nice thing about this incredibly warm and predictable summer, when you look at the forecast, it's just nonstop yellow sunshine in the sky, is that you can plan ahead. You can leave your tools out. They're not going to get wet. You don't have to pack away every day. Um, and you can just kind of consistently get stuff done without dealing with rain and mud and all of that. So I've really actually, uh, uh, we need rain, we need more rain, but uh, it's been very productive. And it's been one of those summers when, you know, when I was in Vancouver, you know, I, we, everything was done on my home and I would just hit the road and do stuff with my company. And, but, but a lot of it was just spinning wheels. It wasn't really productive time. So I spent hours just driving around to our job sites and driving here and driving there and in awful traffic. And, um, You'd lay your head down at night and all the days seemed to blend into one. And uh, weeks ago by, months ago by, and it was hard to recall. Sorry, I'm, every time I look down, there's a weed that needs pulling. Um, it was hard to kind of, it was like, oh my God, a month just slipped by and I didn't even barely notice it. It was kind of like almost in zombie mode. And when I, I was noticing the other day that when I put my head down to rest, I'm like, wow, we did a lot today. I went fishing with my son. I did this project, spent time with the family, you know. And so it's been a very, very full summer. I feel like there's been a really nice balance of hard work, productivity, but also recreation. We've done lots with the family. We're each actually heading to Tofino uh, on Monday for um, a week. So it's another, our last kind of 
kick at the can of doing something family oriented in the summer. And uh, so I feel very uh, full as far as um, that, that regard. Like we've done a lot. We've really sucked the life and wrung the life out of this summer. And that feels good because when you get older, um, you get a bit panicky about making all the moments count. And I feel like we've made all the moments really count. So um, that's a, a good thing. And I want to celebrate that. Um, but, you know, with winter on the horizon, um, you know, we need to be getting stuff ready for winter, which is for me making sure all of the gutters and downspouts are going into their rain barrels. I've had to dr build drainage systems for the rain because as I'll show you here, we got three rain barrels here, which this roof and that roof will drain into, but those are going to fill up with a couple of days of good hard rain. So what I've done is built an overflow, which is drilled into the side here, goes down into the ground, had to trench it along and tie it into the drain tile over there. This drain tile is going to be hopefully not overwhelmed. There's only a four inch pipe, maybe it's six inch. I think it's four inch chickens and um we just put this gate in the other day so it's kind of good what i want to do is put a bit of driftwood across the top to link these two posts and yeah this is my field in which i'm very proud another project we did this summer um so yeah no you know i hope that drain's not overwhelmed with the amount of water i've got running into it and i have to do the same up on the ugly house which still doesn't have a name give me some give me some names folks um so that when the rain comes, it doesn't overflow and just end up spilling all over the property. So there's lots of little things that need to be done to just prepare for the, the fall rains because they will come and they'll potentially come with a vengeance. Um, our greenhouse is still producing like crazy. We just tilled uh, the field where we had a thousand um, garlics. So that's kind of getting ready to seed with something that can be composted and um, the store is doing very well. We're probably averaging about 30 to $45 a day um, just from the little things that we're putting in there. Getting to grips with the orchard. And um, yeah, it feels like you, you find your pace. And uh, when you first start farming, it's on a new property, it's a bit panicky. And then you just start to get this rhythm going. Um, fishing has been amazing. It's been so satisfying. Um, being able to eat your own produce like you're really connected to the full story you plant the seed you watch the seed grow you pick it then you eat it it feels very almost spiritual and catching these the amount of salmon we've been able to catch this year and stock our freezer that's felt really really good too there's something that we miss out on when we don't grow and catch our own food and i think it's that connection point that we've lost when you go to the grocery store you don't have that connection point when you fry up that that steak you're just thinking okay this is feeding me but you don't you're not thinking about the process that went into making that steak or or eating that fish and so when you catch it there's something um incredible about it so whenever you have the opportunity to grow or hunt your own food take it because it's um it's a special experience that we should all experience, I think. Um, and it's very, very satisfying and, and uh, it adds a whole element. It, it wakes up something that was never woken up before. So yeah, the Avion, we're getting her ready to take to Tofino. I had an electrician come and help me for a day, do low voltage, just trying to figure out some of the weirdness going on. It had a bad ground. So that was money well spent. The ugly house, the, the solar system is working fantastic. Um, we're basically the whole, this whole end of the farm is running purely off of the solar power. Um, so that's satisfying. You know, my saws, my grinders, everything's running off solar. Um, inside here, we're, we've kind of reached a point where we're just waiting for drywall. So this has all been insulated. Um, I need to get gas hooked up, so that's taking a bit to try and find someone to help me with that. I might tackle it myself. Um, so yeah, once this is drywalled, then it will be time to uh, kind of carry on with, with this. But I kind of got this over the, the heavy point right now, and I'm just noticing a bit of tech tape I gotta do. So um, yeah, that's where we're at. That's where we're at on the farm. Just wanted to give you a little update there, folks. How's the boat building process going, Dave? Inside blue.